One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video. This is one that I kind of, I kind of had, I kind of had to make this one on the fly because I had something else planned for tonight because we were supposed to have a guest, but he couldn't make it. So um, we rescheduled. And so I kind of had to change what I was going to do to something else. I had something special planned, but we'll do that on the next webinar, which will be on the third um, because next Thursday is Thanksgiving. So this is a kind of one I made up on the fly, but um, so yeah. It should be an, an early night tonight, probably like 30 minutes early. But we'll make up for it on the next one. The next one should be pretty good. Anyway, yeah, so let's get started. So today I want to talk about hesitation because it's something that we all go through. Um, and it's something that we all fight. And it's, you know, it's not always bad. And I want to talk about that. So we'll, we'll get into that later. So, yeah, so I did basically on this stock, I was just looking for reactive trades here. Um, I wasn't trying to pick a direction um, on the stock. I was just trying to get some scalps off. And so, like, one thing I want to point out with this chart, something to learn here, is that these, these, tr these, these trades aren't random. You'll notice that these stocks, that these reactive trades are all after um, support breakdowns, after big moves or big red moves, or um, resistance breakouts, or, resistant resistance breakouts after you know bullish up moves so like i mean this tank through vwap onto volume i felt like i could get a scalp here right and then this kind of this reclaim right here of of the tank candle you know and, and then vwap like i'm I, I get a couple scalps off here try to recycle here and and i bail it because it's stronger of a pullback than i wanted um you know we break over this six dollar level um and and i put a buy order out for an for a nice scalp little recycle here and I gave up on it. Uh, but then we get this massive tank and I put a nice short on. And this is the kind of scalping that like, that should be um, not on huge size, but just um, kind of wallet patterns. And these kind of trades can just add up over time. You know, as long as, as long as you don't go too big in these, you can take really as many as you want and you don't have to worry about giving back profit so you can keep going and you don't have to worry about losing on it because it's not so bad. They're just like wallet pattern scouts. And so whenever I find a stock that's kind of trading actively and, you know, reactively, I try to do stuff like this. Anything else? Yeah. And they're all after big moves that break range, right? You know, like break a VWAP short, rip back over VWAP long, break, break $6 high a day long, tank huge from high a day quick short stuff like that um solo this was a couple days ago monday or tuesday um yeah and so this i i, I want to show the only reason why i'm showing this one this trade actually didn't work out that great but um the way i entered this trade was pretty perfect and so this is what an example of something that i like to do um i'll get in and i and i'll i'll get in a size like the starter size to where, and this is no more than a half, probably like a, a, this trade, it was a third. Um, I, I got in a third and just basically I can sit through anything on a third. And that's kind of the point. I can sit through anything on a third. And why get in at all? Well, there's, you know, this is, this was kind of like that death grind stock. And on death grind stocks, sometimes you just have to get in if you're going to long it. Like, but the problem is, is that you can't just long full size because any, like it could tank completely. You just, tank like and so that's why you can't go big in these but like you can ease into this kind of trade and so what i did and so naturally of course right where i bought it was the top <laughs> or not the top but it stopped just you know like oh death grind will let me just put a buy order out momentum stops i, I remember like Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to <sighs> Yep. Okay, fine. And so... 
but the point is, is like you, you, you prepare for that kind of shit. Like you expect that kind of stuff. So that way, if it doesn't go according to plan, you can kind of sit through it. So I just put on a, like a third of a position on, um, and, and like, and then it kind of went sideways and it was playing with six very hard. And I was like, you know what? I know what the stock wants me to do. The stock wants me to sell under six and then it's going to fucking spike. And so like, I had that in my mind. I was like, I'm going to have to survive a six crack. I'm going to have to survive a six crack. And so I'm like, I'm just, ba- I'm waiting for the six crack to happen at this point. I'm just like, come on, let's go. Let's like, I just know it's going to crack six. Like, there's no way that like, if you're, if you have a stop at 599 that you're not going to get triggered. So uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the six track and I'm like, I have to sit through it as low as it goes. Like, I mean, if it goes under 90, I'm going to probably sell it. Um, and notice that that's something that I can say, right? I, I mean, like I, I would definitely sell it at 80 at 580, but like, you notice how I can say I'm probably going to sell it under nine, you know, like I can do that when I have a comfortable third size position, you know, like when I can still be flexible with the trade. The second I get into full size, I know exactly where I'm fucking stopping out. There is no, I'm probably getting out here. Right. And that's something that like, you might talk to a mod and they're probably, and you say, where are you going to stop out? And they're like, well, I'm probably here. Well, they're saying probably because they're still flexible in the trade. And that's a key thing of note. Let's get started. I'm probably stopping out at zero. Yeah, yeah, probably. Maybe not. I might still hold it at zero. Anyway, but I knew I needed to hold through the six tank. Um, and once six cracked and held, that's when I was like, I like this, right? Because like I mentioned a couple in, in like my stops webinar where I said, one thing that you want, a technique that you want to do that, that you want to use is wait until you would have where wait until the price hits a stock where you would have stopped out. And once that happens, um, now stopping out under that level, you have a lot more confidence because you, you just saved a, a prior loss that you would have taken. So sometimes you want to let that stop loss get tested first before you use it. Like it's a good thing to let a, a stop level prove itself before you use it. And I was like, well, let me see, you know, if it, and, and I knew then once it tanked under six, it went to like 95 or something I'm like, perfect. I, I'm going to add here back over six and I can risk 95. And that's like risking six cents guys. I, I'm risking like six cents now. Like my risk to reward on this trade is epic now, now that that happens. Um, anyway, um, the, well, the other factors on this trade, it, it was an electric vehicle hype. You know, it's a VWAP reclaim. You know, I'm, I'm buying the dip. Uh, and I'm not afraid of VWAP dump risk, right? And one thing, the reason why I'm not afraid of VWAP dump risk, one, because I wasn't in so big. And two, we're not, we're, we're in a bullishly controlled market. If we were in the market three months ago, I would be nervous as fuck about a VWAP dump, right? But here I'm less like, now I'm like, you know, let's see if it can dip to view up and maybe if it holds, I might be able to get some low 90 orders. Who knows? Oh God. What is it? Every time I say fuck. Oh fuck. Oh shit. I didn't mean to do that. Um, anyway, and so like, this is, this is how the trade panned out. Like it didn't, it, it, it fucking sucked. Like, <laughs> It just stopped. And I was like, well, that sucks. Like, I mean, I bought it. I got the nice ad. I sold it. I recycled it. And then I, and then I sold it. I, and then I sold it at 90 or as it broke 95. And so that was annoying. I, I think it eventually reclaimed later, way later, but like my trade over, I was going for the, I was going for that, um, that prior close comeback, but it didn't do it. So it's, it's moot. You know, it's whatever. I mean, that, that's an okay loss. That's an okay loss trade. I mean, you got you got a green trade. I'm. I, I don't even know what. I don't remember what I lost. And that like, I don't even know. Really small, like negligible. And that's the thing is when you get a sell off, it helps. I bought CBAT today, and I had hesitation here. And the reason why I had hesitation is because I wasn't sure what I wanted. 
And so that's why I got out right away. It wasn't even because there was a red candle. I bought it here and I, and I, I, I had conflicting thoughts here with CBAT. Like with CBAT, I bought it and I was like, huh, should I swing this one? Like, I, cause I've been swinging stuff. Like, should I swing this one? But like, I, but the thing is, and then like, but I'm like, but I bought it for the reclaim. Like I'm, this entry screams reclaim. Reclaim entry, I should be selling into a spike. But then I was like, but I think this could be a, a decent swing. Like this is one of the hot stocks. And then, and then I thought like, well, fuck, if this is a swing, I need to be really patient on this trade. And, and like, I don't want a 750 average here. If I'm going to swing this, I, like this could easily fail here. And then I'm going to want like a 720 average if I'm going to swing it. I want to start building lower. I'm like, well, fuck, now I have too much conflicting thoughts. I don't know if I want to swing it or if I want to. And so I bailed on the trade. Right? So that's why I, I sold this one. It's not like the little red candle. It's like, it's like I, I, I had conflicting ideas with what I wanted. So I just failed it. And of course, it just fucking, this course. Like, of course, that's, just, that's trading. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it, guys. All right, guys. I will see you guys later. Take it easy, guys. And stop. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.